In today's video, I want to talk a little bit about creating an author archive template inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. If you're running any kind of blog or content heavy website, especially one that has multiple authors on it, having this kind of author archive template is really important. For example, on the admin bar website, we have multiple authors. We have different guest posts that come in and write different pieces of content. And the author archive template is really important for being able to display all the content that that author's contributed to the website. Not only does this help attract more people to do guest posting on your website, but it gives readers a place to find more of the types of content they enjoy writing. I know if I find someone specific that I really enjoy what they teach or what they're talking about, I'll want to go find and discover more content written by them. Unfortunately, the template that comes straight out of Generate Press isn't a whole lot to write home about, and creating one using the Generate Block system of query loops is a little bit difficult and does require knowing a couple simple little tricks. So in this video, I'm going to go through all those details and show you exactly how to get an archive template set up and running, and we'll even do a little design work while we're at it. So if that sounds like something that'd be interesting to you, stick around and let's jump in. Okay, as you can see on this post, I do already have two authors set up. So we have a fake author here named Kim, and then I have myself set up as well. And I've put in about 12 different posts inside here and then attributed some of them to myself and some of them to Kim. So if we pull up the default author archive template, what we have here is where it's pulling in the author gravatar or the image here the author's name, and then it will actually pull in their bio, which we can see on mine where I've gone ahead and filled out the bio. So this one gives you a little bit better of a preview since there is a real Gravatar image, my name, and the bio information. Then underneath that, it's gonna show a list of all the posts that are by this author. So we can see the list here of these posts is actually different than the list on Kim's because it's pulling in the articles Kim wrote or the articles that I wrote. Now inside the customizer, there is some opportunities to tweak the way this looks a little bit, but essentially all you'd be able to do is put these posts into some kind of two or three column grid, but you really don't have full control over the design or the style of it. And for me, if I'm selling a custom website to a client, I do want to customize all these things and not have them just straight what comes out of the theme. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave this author archive page open for mine so we can use that to kind of see how everything's working on the front end, but we'll jump in here and go to elements to start creating our new author archive template. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add new element and the element type we're going to choose is block and we'll hit create. Now we can give this a name. I'm going to call it author archive template. You can call it whatever you want, but of course being descriptive is definitely helpful when you're trying to find this later on. Now, the first trick that we gotta know what to do in order to make this work is here over on the right-hand side underneath the element. You're gonna wanna change this element type from hook to loop template. And I actually had to check with Tom at Generate Blocks to make sure I was doing this correctly because to me, this doesn't feel intuitive to change this to a loop template. Here inside this template, we can have a mixture of both static and dynamic content. So to me, it doesn't feel like we're creating a loop. I know in some of the other builders, when you're creating the loop, you're just creating that single like card to loop through. And here we're actually creating the entire templated page. So to me, this wasn't something that was obvious right up front, but this is correct. And the way we want to do this to control this archive template. Next here under the display rules and location, we're going to want to open this up and we're going to want to choose author archives. Now you'll see there are other options in here. We have all archives, author archives, date, search results, 404 templates, all of these things would be made in a very similar fashion to what we're doing today. Of course, today we're just focusing on the author archives, but you will be able to do these other kind of archives using the same setup here. All right, so now we'll go ahead and start building out this page. So I'm gonna just default this here to having a section with the intersection. We'll give it a bit of padding. And we'll talk a little bit about what we want this layout to be. So by default, it has this author information across kind of the hero of the page and then all the posts. What I'm thinking is we want a small left-hand column that's gonna have my image and name and then bio. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have a group of cards that show each one of the blog posts that I've written. So to accomplish that, we'll just jump in here and we'll add a grid block. We'll go with a two column grid and on the left, we'll go with 33%, and on the right, we'll go with 66%. So over here on the left, we'll have all the author information. On the right, we'll have all their posts. I'm gonna go ahead and pop open this list view. We'll go into the grid block, and we'll add some gap in between these two columns, maybe something like 96 pixels in between them. 
So let's focus first on setting up this author information. The first thing I want to add is the author image. So we can use the generate blocks image block here and scroll down on all of our options here to the dynamic data drop down. And we want to go ahead and enable the dynamic data. And under the image source, we want to pick author avatar. Now, by default, this is going to bring in the Gravatar image for this author. So you're, if you need to change what that image is, you're either going to have to connect the account you're using on WordPress to Gravatar and upload the image there, or there are plugins in the repo that lets you circumvent that system and upload your own image. And if you do that, it will show up here inside this section. I've actually wrote to generate blocks about being able to add a author meta so you could put in your own custom field for images but i'm not sure that that's possible just yet so for now we kind of need to stick with the gravatar route of course we can go in here and do any of these effects where we want to change the size or the border radius or shadows or anything else you'd like to do to your image the only problem that you have when you're doing this here is you cannot see those previews very well on the back end as you can tell, I'm not seeing an image of me here right now. I'm just seeing a blank box. And that's kind of a limitation of the generate block system is we're not actually able to preview something from the front end here in this back end as we're creating elements. So as long as you know what's going to be there, you can work around that. Obviously, you have to use your imagination a little bit, though. OK, underneath the image here, I'm going to add a headline. And this is where my name is going to go. And for me, that probably needs to be the H1 of this page since it is the author archive page. So I'm going to change that to an H1 heading. I do think this is too big for the design that I'm envisioning here. So we will use one of my global styles I already have set up to make it quite a bit smaller. I also want to add just a little bit of top margin. So maybe we'll say one rim of top margin. And we'll scroll down here to connect the dynamic data. We'll go ahead and toggle on dynamic data. And under the content source, we're going to want to scroll down here under the author heading, and we want to do name. So by default, inside of the author information, you can change how you want their name displayed. This is just going to use whatever choice they've made on the back end. But you can come in here and choose their nickname, first name, or last name. But I think typically on an author archive page, you're going to want their first and last name. Now underneath that, we're going to add another headline, and this is going to be to add the author bio. Let's go ahead and just take a look at how this is set up on the back end under the user. So if we go in here into my username and we scroll down, we can see under biographical info, I've gone ahead and added this bio here. So what we want to do is pull in that bio so people know a little bit about the author. So here I've added the headline block. And if we scroll down here and enable dynamic data, you would assume that under the content source, you would scroll down to author and you would have some kind of bio information. But alas, it is not there. What you have to do to work around this is actually go to author meta. And then we can type in the word description. And now if we're using the author meta and the author meta field of description, it's going to pull that author bio on the front end. Again, this is another thing that I don't think is very intuitive about this system and why I wanted to make this video in the first place, because there are these little tricks that you're going to have to know in order to be able to customize this page. But now that we got that there, we've set this up as our loop template and we set it up as our author archives. I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And now we can refresh this author archive template on the front end, and we should see it pull in the author image, the name, and the bio over in this left-hand column. So we'll go ahead and refresh now, and we can see that's working exactly as expected. Now, for my purposes, I'm probably going to want a bigger image. I might want to make this text a little bit smaller. So we do have to kind of go back and forth to actually preview. That wasn't totally clear on this back end since we can't see all the information. But on the front end, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So maybe we'll do 120 pixels by 120 pixels. And we'll change the border radius to, we'll just do 1,000 pixels just to make it a circle. And then here under this author meta information, I do have a global style set up for smaller body copy, which I think would be appropriate in this situation. So we'll go ahead and refresh that on the front end. And we'll see the image is quite a bit bigger now. It has the full radius corners. And we've made the text a little bit smaller here for the bio. So I think this works pretty well. Now over here, what we're going to want to do is create a query loop that's going to bring in all the posts for this author. Now there's one more trick we're going to have to know in order to get this working right. So let's go ahead in here and just add a query loop block. And we want to make sure we're using that generate blocks one. And we can start blank. 
Now the trick you need to know in order to get this working appropriately for the author archive template is when you have this query loop selected, you're gonna to wanna to go over here under query parameters and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and check this inherit query from template. And essentially what that's gonna do is tell WordPress that when somebody's on this page, the, the query we're gonna use for this loop template is whatever query we're on. So if we're on the Kyle Van Dusen author archive, then show all the posts that are appropriate to that. If we're on the other author, show the ones appropriate to that. Because typically when you're using that query loop template, you're gonna go in here and select the type of post and all that. We don't wanna do that because we need this query to actually happen dynamically. So all you have to do to ensure that that works is just toggle on this inherit query from template. Now we can go ahead and design something simple here. We're gonna have our grid by default and our post template. I'm thinking we'll do a 50-50 column. We can go in here and add an image. Under that, we're gonna to wanna to connect this to dynamic data as well. So the image source is gonna be featured image. We're probably gonna want a little margin between that and the next thing. So maybe I'll just say one rim below the image and we'll add in a headline block. This is probably gonna be appropriately an H2, but again, it's quite a bit too big. So I'm gonna choose one of my smaller sizes here and we'll go down to our dynamic data and we'll connect this to our post title. So now you can see our post title for all these posts are coming in. We need a little bit of space in between them. So I'm gonna give just a little bit of gap in between these. And then we'll go in here to this post template and make sure that it's linked to the appropriate post. So to do that, I'm gonna just select the post template, scroll down here to enable dynamic data. And for the link source, I'm gonna change this to single post. And that will make sure that this entire box links to the single post. Now, when you do this, there are some options here inside this link option here. There's the link type of hidden link and the link type of wrapper. From what I understand, the wrapper is gonna give us some better accessibility functions. And when I use a screen reader, I can actually hear it announce the right thing when I'm using this. I'm not sure that that's 100% the best way to do this in Generate Blocks. I'm still kind of working through that. Uh, and I'm not an accessibility expert, but from the best of my knowledge, I think it does work better in these situations where we're querying dynamic content to use the wrapper. On this hidden link, which is what happens by default, you can put an ARIA label, but you can't bring in a dynamic ARIA label. So that means you're kind of stuck with putting in something static here, even though it's gonna be different for every post. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to wrapper. We can see that this kind of messes with our layout here. I think it's turning everything into a Flexbox container. So we're gonna to have to scroll up here and change this display to flex and change it to column so we get it to stack back on top of each other here. Now, of course, we do have the underlines here, which is how I have this set up inside of my default template is to have an underline for a link and then not have it underlined when you hover over it. I'm not sure that always makes sense on cars like this, but it's a good starting place for us. So we'll go ahead and update this here. We'll go to the front end and refresh. And we should see now we have all of our author information here, and then we have all of our cards here with all the posts. I can see that this gap is a little bit too big, so we'll go back here and, oh, I know, I have some CSS inside of my uh, child theme that's actually putting that gap on there, so you can kind of ignore that for this demo. I don't wanna have to go clean all that out, but you can see now that we have our image and we have our text down here. Of course, if we click into one of these, it's gonna take us right to that post since that's what we linked it to. And if we go back into our blog and we look at Kim's profile, we should see it's inherited the same layout too. So we can see Kim's photo. Obviously she doesn't have it connected to Gravatar since she doesn't exist. Her name and then her posts here that are associated with her. So as you can see, setting up the author archive template is actually pretty simple, but you do have to know a couple tricks in there. First, you have to remember that it's a loop template you're setting up. Secondly, you have to remember that when you're wanting to pull in the author bio, you have to use the author meta and change the meta key to description. And then lastly, when you put in that query loop there to show all your posts, you wanna make sure that you're inheriting the query template. Now this is gonna work really similarly if you're setting up your search archives or even a 404 page, you're gonna follow the same process there. If you have trouble with that, let me know down in the comments and I could do a dedicated video to show the search results page or the 404 page, or maybe we combine that all into one single video to kind of tackle a bunch of the other utility pages that are on a website. 
Hopefully this video has been helpful for you and you'll spend a couple extra minutes here going forward to make sure to create these custom author archive pages. I think it's really beneficial if you're doing any kind of website that's gonna have multiple authors on it. And it's something that guest post people were definitely gonna appreciate having some kind of library of all their content on your site. Make sure to subscribe here to the channel so you can catch us on the next video. And there should be a couple cards popping up right now to show you a few different tricks that I've shared inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. We'll catch you guys on the next video.